<clears throat> is this mic on? Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. This is a sound check. This is your cover, cover more than ever one. Now I'm not seeing speakers hotter than ever. Drop a new band that you never heard before. Seeing this again and we'll play it all around the world. Lots of haters talking trash, they don't like your sound. Grab a talker, join the party, and we'll shut them down. Independent radio, it's the future now. Turn it up, tell my friend, it's show time. That'll damn sure wake you up if nothing else does. This is Moose coming to you from the Moose Pit. So we're going to do this again. I've done this once. <laughs> this is the uh, Killing Grace. And, and the last time I did it, it hadn't even been released yet. So I was special at the time. But because I sucked so bad the first time. And what happened is, is that, um, you, as you can imagine, I have a lot of music on my computer. Lots of bands sending in music every day. And somehow or another, um, I slipped in a couple songs from different bands. And if you actually had the chance to listen to the first time I did the sound check on the Killing Grace record, I was like, what the hell? What? What? Why is there a black metal song on here? I was so confused. And then there was another one called, I don't even remember what it was. I don't want to get into the bands or any other bit. I was just like, this doesn't work. You know, I had a mindset coming into this because I know Killing Grace, and I was like, okay, so this is going to be kick-ass American hard rock, and we're going to have ourselves a um, a really good uh, sound check here. I was excited about it, and then I was at the end of it, I was just like, what were they thinking? You know, I was so confused. I even had people, uh, Jenny Jenkins, who I <laughs> um, I know the kind of music she digs, so I'm like, you're going to love this, man. You're going to listen to it, and she's like, what was that? The same band. And I was like, I know, what? And then I finally figured it out. I was like, uh, one of the guys from the band wrote me and they said, hey, man, uh, these songs aren't ours. And I was like, okay, I suck. <laughs> All right, I give in. I just suck. Um, so we're going to do it again this time. And I only have 11 songs. So we're in the right place. Man, jeez. Um, yeah, so like I said, admittedly, I did a horrible job the last time, and this time I'm going to be able to give a more fair review. So uh, this is a little bit different than a normal sound check because I've actually heard the record. I know what I'm in for this time, but um, I'm going to listen to it again and give it a little bit of a clear perspective since last time I was just like, what happened? What in the world? So um, congratulations to the guys. I, I, From what I understand, they've been signed to a label now, and I think they released a video today. Um, and I apologize to them for the wait on me getting this redone. But, I, <laughs> man, sometimes doing a podcast can turn into a, uh, a nightmare. And, you know, working a, a regular job as a regular Joe, I got to squeeze this in there. So I apologize for the wait, Chad and the guys. Thanks so much for being patient with me. Hope you guys have an awesome Halloween. I'm actually finishing this up on Halloween. I started on it uh, last night and uh, got called into work. And, you know, tonight we had the candy with the kids and all that stuff. So um, we're going to get this taken care of now. And hopefully your fans uh, will forgive me for the last sound checked. But if you've never listened to before, my name is Moose coming to you from the Moose Pit Studio in Oklahoma City, which is under renovation right now, so there's no filming tonight. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm finishing up this uh, "Speak with a Fist" from Killing Grace, and just like I said earlier, um, good American hard rock, and uh, it's got a little bit of uh, a grunge uh, essence to it, which which was. Um, kind of surprising to me, but this at the same time, it was also a little bit refreshing too, because, um, it wasn't just cookie cutter. Um, you don't want a lot, a lot of, uh, what we hear on the radio, uh, from Godsmack to, uh, Alter Bridge, 
um, to uh, Breaking Benjamin and bands like that. A lot of that oh, disturbed. You know, these are classic examples of American quote unquote hard rock, but a lot of it's really pop laden. And if you look at, you know, Poison and, and Warrant and even Motley Crue to an extent, there's a lot of pop sensibility in those songs. So when you, I, when I use the word American hard rock, a lot of people are confused with, <clears throat> with that. Um, there's not a lot of pop sensibility to American hard rock. Um, American hard rock is dirty. It's gritty. It's nasty. Um, and this has a lot of grit to it. Um, you know, and with a title like uh, Speak With a Fist, you kind of expect that. Um, it's a good romp through a rock and roll barn. You know what I mean? It's a good slab of American metal. Uh, we're going to get into it. Uh, the first cut is actually an intro that bleeds into uh, the opening song, uh, Cry My Name, or Say My Name, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll talk to you in a few minutes after you um, try to peel your headphones off your head after listening to this. Um it's sound checked with Moose and Killing Grace. This, hey man, you know you only get greats together so often. This is one of those times. So they're great and um, they're together. I'm just here. <laughs> All right, man. So thanks so much for listening. As I redo sound checked with Killing Grace, speak with a fist. Coming to digital platforms and stores and mail orders and all that stuff near you soon. Check out their new video. I just saw it today on Facebook. Go to Killing Grace. Find them. Check it out. It's amazing. Here we go. Speak with the fist. Sound checked right here from the Moose Pit at OKC on Sound Check. You're listening to Sound Check with the Moose.
listening to Soundcheck with the Moose. I remember one of the things that uh, I remembered the first time I did this and listened to the record, one of the things that kind of hit me that I didn't talk about enough was the drive. Um, And that is such an important part um, of hard rock that too many people miss out um, for the sake of aggression. And aggression and drive is two completely different deals. And when that bottom end is just kicking you square in the nuts all the way through and just riding you uh, like a bareback damn donkey um, through the desert, it makes it a whole different record. Extremity, um, for the sake of extremity, sometimes is just cliche and boring. Um, but I like the drive that Killing Grace have that, like I said, that bottom end just consistently punches you in the face and the extremity is on top like a, um, like a condiment almost. And that's kind of the way I think it should work because without a good foundation, you know, um, nothing works. Um, really, really, really cool tune. So I also wanted to get this out there real quick. And I said this on the first show, I'm going to say it again. Listen, the guys in Killing Gray said they, you know, when I do these sound check shows, um, they pay me to do it because they want to know my opinion. Um, I love the guys. Uh, Chad's an awesome, awesome dude, but I ain't kissing nobody's ass. And I'm not saying this uh, for them as much as I am for the listener. Um, if I don't like something, I don't like it. And I know that Chad knows that. Uh, and I know that if you listen to Soundcheck, you know that too. Um, so don't think for a second that I'm going to get on here and just have a love fest um, because there are things on the record that I don't like that once I go through these songs again, I'm going to be reminded of and we'll talk about them. And I'll have my ideas on what I think we should be different. And of course, uh, they're the band and you're the listener. So you could all tell me to, you know, kiss your ass. And that's, um, that's part of the fun of Soundcheck because it's a, you know, it's a different view. Too many bands out there have their girlfriends and their mommies telling them how great they are. And um, that's where I come in. <laughs> so uh, we're going to keep moving here. I remember this song from last time and I remember really liking it. Uh, Living Like a Suicide. I felt like it would be a radio single. If I were the producer of this record, um, this is uh, the very first song that I heard last time that I said, that is what I would want to play if somebody said to me, hey, what's what's Killing Grey sound like? This is the song that I would want to throw down and say, this is what they sound like. And if I were trying to get them on the air on big rock radio, this is the tune that I'd be sending out to people. A living like a suicide, killing grace off a of speak with a fist from the moose pit and OKC it's moose and sound checked. Let's do this. Where you get rated in tacos only on sound check.
Rocks Oklahoma. I may have said it last time I did this, and I'll say it again just so everybody understands. And by the way, I was noticing listening back to the tracks that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of reverb uh, because the, the uh, studio's under construction, so a lot of the sound stuff is down. So I apologize if I sound a little bright. Um, so oh, I don't like to um, compare bands to other bands. One of the things I do, though, um, is when I listen to these songs, I try to think to myself in my head, what audience is going to gravitate towards this music? Um, and this is, to me, uh, what I would call an ACDC uh, tree band. And that means the um, branches of bands that came off of ACDC. So it's got that Buck Cherry feel to it, that Jackal. Um, you know, you can name a million ACDC, but it's got that uh, kind of ACDC grit rock um, mixed with some Alice in Chains, uh, and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of Saigon kick. Maybe it's got that, um, like I said, that grungy kind of, um, overtone to it. It's like I said, it's, it's, it's American hard rock with this, with this grunge mixture in it. Um, it's very party rock, you know? Um, and, and I think that that to me, uh, yeah. You know, when I'm listening to Catatonia and Opeth all day long and, and Dark Throne and it's all so serious and I'm just, you know, I'm just like tired of having to think about what I'm listening to, you know, listening to Niall, you're just like, what is happening to my brain? Um, you know, I like to throw on a Van Halen record and I'm just like, okay, yeah, this is, I don't have to think. It's just there. It's good. It's like, uh, it's like fried chicken. You know what I mean? It's just, it's perfect. You don't have to do anything to it. There it is. It's good. Um, and that's the vein, uh, that I get with this record. And, and that is not a diss in any way, shape or form. Those, um, rock and roll records that you just toss on, uh, to be the background soundtrack to your life are the most important ones. I mean, um, and this has got that real, you know, I don't feel like thinking today. I feel like rocking that. I want to play air guitar and headbang. And this is that kind of, um, fun record. Excuse me, it just burped. That was beautiful. And that um, I'll take ten percent off for that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, really, an interesting song. So, like I said to me, that would have been uh, the first single because that is a great introduction of exactly what you're going to get. There's no, it doesn't lie to you. It just drops it on you, um, and it's you know you kind of like it. It's like pizza pie. It's it's greasy, but it's good for you. Because it tastes so good, you know what I mean? So, um, even though it's, you know, horrible for you, is what I meant to say. You know, it's really bad for you, but it's just so good. It's a guilty pleasure. This is a kind of a, one of those guilty pleasure records. Um, we're going to get into the next tune, which is a song called Everybody Hates Me that was, I'm pretty sure, uh, written uh, my perspective of all of the people that listen to the show. You all hate me. <laughs> It's okay. I'm just keep doing it. It's I'm annoying. That's what I do. I'm like Kevin DeBro. I just keep showing up. I'm just like I mean, I guess he can't show up anymore. He's dead, but God rest his soul. My condolences. Uh anyway, yeah, I'm just an annoying punk ass. But here I am, and everybody hates me. It's off of the release Speak with a Fist from Killing Grace, and you're hearing it right here on Soundcheck. <laughs> Wanna know if you suck? Hey, you suck? Send your music to Soundcheck. Pouring salt 
poison to my wounds I'm always fighting So I will never be like you No more excuses You spit your venom causing pain My God, you're selfish You spit your venom spreading hurt Spare the rod Spoil the child Oh my God You're selfish Spare the rod Spoil the child Oh my God You're selfish kind of interesting going through this a second time and listening to it uh, and remembering things that I thought in my head last time listening to it that I don't know if I said or not. So this time I'm going to try and spit them out. Um, I think there's such an interesting connection uh, with the vocals um, and uh, Mike from uh, Suicidal Tendencies. It's got that suicidal kind of feel to it. It's really... and uh, that chaotic kind of um, tempo, if you will, that that uh, suicidal has. There's a lot of that going on here. I don't know if it's a um, more of a punky kind of hardcore thing, um, or if it's a unique, you know, mixture of. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of machismo in it. You know what I mean? It's just um, you can't really can't really ignore the um the moxie that's going on there it it, because it's so in your face and you're like okay well this you know it's one of those things where i i always like to say that um i want to believe that the singer believes what he's singing um or has an actual emotion about it. Well, this dude sounds pretty pissed. <laughs> it sounds um, nice and angry. And uh, so I believe it. And it's, it's interesting because like, I really can hear such a um, correlation between uh, him and Mike from um, uh, suicidal. Very, very cool. Interesting, interesting mix. Um, the music is, is so weird. Uh, and, and I almost tend to, the more I listen to it, I tend to stray away from the, um, cause I don't want, people to uh, think that I'm comparing this to Buck Cherry. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's got that Buck Cherry, but it's also got that suicidal. Um, it also has that Alice in Chains in there too. Um, there are moments, I remember this last time I listened to the record, there are moments where <clears throat> the vocal harmonies hit just right and they're beautiful. Um, and somewhere in the album, I don't remember where it is, maybe the last tune. 
I think that that is a missed opportunity. Uh, we'll get into that when I hit the song or whatever. But, um, you know, there there were things that I would have changed on the record, and, and that's one of them because there are so many flashes of, like, uh, a brilliance that it's just going so fast and it's moving too quickly uh, that I'm afraid, number one, people will miss how uh, intelligent they are. And I think that it's something that the band um, – can really sit down and listen to this record and go, okay, man. So what were the five best moments on this record? And then they expand on those things. And, you know, that's not going to be um, too tough to do because there's um, some good moments in here that, um, and I think if, uh, listen, it's really good. I, I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. I think it's good. I think it could be better. And and I think that maybe that's going to come with time. Maybe that comes with a producer. Maybe that comes with who knows what it is. But um, it's got all of the elements to be everything um, about a good hard rock record. And that's, you know, that's the good thing about it. Number five, take me with you again from the Moose Pit. This is Moose. Give us a text sometime, 424-666-7356. We might, uh, you know, read it on the air. Why not? Take me with you. Find Soundcheck on iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and in your local taco truck. I never thought I'd see you walking away from me when you don't have to leave. Scars are all I have to remember your life with me. You know it's so hard to breathe when you're leaving me.
listen back to this again such an interesting second take on the record <clears throat> if you ever listen to sound check you listen to my normal weekly podcast you know that one of the things i say is uh, if you want to sound like somebody else uh, you have to make it your own it, you better be better than the original or you have to do something uh, to make it your own i cannot put a finger on who killing grace is trying to sound like and that is a good thing um, it does have all those uh, overt influences. You can hear them. You can pick out um, 50 different things in every song that has an influence from somebody else. Um, but what they've done is they put it in a blender and they just made it their own kind of deal. You can't you can't say it sounds too much like anybody else. Um, and you can't say it's the most unique thing you've ever heard. But it's such a good mixture of both that you're like, hey... <laughs> this is this is something and you know what that's probably the reason why they got signed to a label you know if if i'm a label executive i'm like okay these guys uh they get their own kind of sound going on um <clears throat> and that's cool so um i i dig the fact that it's got such a, it's like a supreme pizza man it's got a little bit of something for everybody except for green peppers and mushrooms because who eats those Blech. And if you eat pineapple on pizza, we're not friends. Just letting you know. That's it's for girls. And then I'll consider being a friend with you. Just but don't eat it in front of me. It's like eggs. Okay, those came out of something's ass. How do you eat that? I, anyway, so yeah, Killing Grace, uh, Bloodline. This is another song that I remember uh, from the last time listening through it. Going, that is a great tune. Um, matter of fact, this may be the one that I said was my favorite cut off the whole record. Um, Powerful, punchy, poignant, um, periwinkle. No, I don't think that works. Anyway, a Bloodline, uh, if I remember, this is a really cool tune. Another one of those statement kind of songs uh, from the band. Um, good flow throughout the record, too. It's so different from last time when all that other stuff. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> it's a good flow. It's just a nice, swift kick in the ass through the whole thing. So um, Bloodline, off of Speak with a Fist, uh, let's bake this cake and let's get this bad boy out to the public. Kelly Grace. Text in your request to the Soundcheck Taco Line 
bloodline. The Moose Rocks Colorado. So I've been struggling with it, and and this is one of my favorite things to do is listen to releases and kind of pick out, uh, like I said earlier, what audience is going to grab this. And so we've come across the mic from uh, Suicidal. Uh, I've come across the Allison Chains and the Buck Cherry and all those things and the ACDC branch. Um, that is all most definitely there. But I just I kept saying to myself, I'm missing something. There's something in there that is so familiar to me um, that I can't put my finger on i finally did it um (coughs) it's it's that i cough um mike Patton from faith no more the um i don't know i'm not a singer so that but all that stuff in the vocal um has a lot of faith no more kind of flavor to it and i gotta be honest with you for me i'm not a huge fan of it um uh I like I was saying a couple tracks back or wherever there are certain times that I hear this really really it's just like the doors to heaven open up there's just really good vocal um harmony that spits out of these tunes um and listen the singer's got such moxie and machismo that's like I said it's a real um you know cocky singing style um and it's good it, it's attention grabbing and maybe that's one of the tools that he uses that whole, you know, wacky uh, Mike Patton esque vocal deal. And I get that to a point, but um, for me, it's not, not my favorite thing. You know, I, I uh, and it also has that, that faith and more uh, kind of bottom end to it too, which it usually, I think the real thing has one of the most beautiful bass tones I've ever heard in my life. Go back and listen to it. Um, what was that guy's name? Rusty Bottoms or whatever the hell his name was. But the the bass tone was just so brutally clear and oh, it was gorgeous. Kind of getting erotic thinking about it. Sorry about that. I have my issues with tones. Uh, yeah. So hey, Faith No More, another good band to add onto the repertoire of. <clears throat> they've just caused this tornado um, of influences and come up with this this cool thing. So we're going to get into a tune uh, called Fight Back Kid, song number seven on the record. Um, and like I said, the flow has been so good so far, not like the insurance chick, uh, the flow of the music, the story, the guy, you know, right? Not flow. She's hot, though. I mean, you know. This is Izzy Devious and Lieutenant Colonel Lee from Accidental President in Sydney, Australia. G'day to all you listeners at Metal Moose Radio. Agitators and flag bearers, stay brutal. Stop me, blow it up and pop me I'll try anything, whiskey shots and more 
Now, one of the other things that I've really noticed about this record is that it does have, um, I think this comes along with being, you know, on that ACDC branch. It has that crossover um, potential um, because if you can't picture um, a truck, you know, out in the middle of a field, a bonfire, a bunch of cowboys and cowgirls having a good time jamming this out, you're, it's got that it's the country music scene loves ACDC loves ZZ top. Um, they like this kind of stuff that's gritty and it all comes down to, um, that American feel. It's just got that Merca stamped all over it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> can you see people rolling down, you know, the sunset strip, uh, rocking some killing grace in their car? You can Um, can you see people in their living rooms just jamming out, uh, head banging and flopping their hair around? You can, uh, can you see those people out in the field having that bonfire party? You can, um, it's lake music, it's arena rock. It is party music. It, and, and that just that, um, bleeding American ooze dripping off of this thing is so cool. So, um, yeah, I, that's something else I'm really gaining from the record. I remember I gained that last time that it had this just red, white, and blue, you know, uh, feel to it, which is, um, jingoistic, you know, and will, um, a lot of people will love that. And then on the other hand, there's a lot of people who will hate that, which is, you know, so pathetic, but uh, it's, 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 uh, good. It's, it's just, um, it's just America, Merca. So yeah, man, I'm, I, I think that if I were in the band, I wouldn't have called the record speak with a fist. I'd have called it Merca. <laughs> just, just with a piece of bacon on the front cover, killing grace, bacon, Merca. Yeah. Just greasy and good for you. So yeah, one finger salute. Now there's nothing more American than that. Coming up right now on Soundcheck. Hey, rock fans, this is T Sing, Matt Vote, Rob Face, and Joe Sanchez, and we're from Drama, Drama Queen. Queen. You're listening to the Metal Moose Radio Show, where Oklahoma rocks. <laughs> You got a minute, better jump in and give it a ride. You got a lot of people living like they're ready to die. I'm gonna get in hell, I'm never gonna get out alive. No one gets out of the night. You got a lot of nerve talking to me that way. You might as well have walked up and just spit in my face. Before you choke on your words, you better give it a taste. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm not sorry for nothing, it's just what we do.
you know what I mean? You love it or leave it kind of a deal. That's one of those deals that this <laughs> this record has a very I I, I don't uh, careless isn't the right word carefree kind of a, this is what we do kind of feel about it and I don't feel like they're trying to convince me of anything. Uh, I feel like they just walked in the room and uh, picked up their instruments and started slapping it out. And, you know, they're not trying to be anybody, which I think is a cool thing because um, it works for some people, you know. Um, hell, uh, Evanescence completely ripped off Lacuna Coil and look how famous, famous they got. Um, sorry, the, my opinions are my own. No need to get angry. Christina Scabia, much better looking than Amy Lee, by the way. Um, so uh, I like that about that they're not trying to convince me of anything other than what they are. It's, it's you know... I've said it before. It's uh, comparing it to the pizza pie earlier or a bottle of Jack Daniels. I mean, when you rip this package open, you know exactly what you're getting. You know, um, it's not like we're going to try to be nice. It's not like uh, we're going to try to be over polished. It's just going to be dirty. It's going to be downright. And, um, you know, we're hoping it's a panty dropper kind of a deal. And it would be, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> God knows I took my underwear off after about the third song. So if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> um, I don't mean to sound repetitive. I, I don't know. There's nothing bad, bad, bad to say. I mean, it's a good, you know, uh, good rock and roll record, which are hard to come by anymore. Just trust me on that. I, I listen to, you know, 45 bands a week. You know, I'd... This doesn't happen very often, not on this consistency. Sometimes you'll have somebody come out with a good rock song, and then the rest of it's garbage. You know, this has been, uh, we're going into track number nine right now, and every song has been a good rock tune. Um, and it has their parts that I don't like, and we'll talk about more of that at the end of the, um, at the end of the recording. Um, the other thing I'm trying to figure out is the longevity of these tunes. And that's something that's also important, um, with multiple spins, uh, how long are these songs going to stick in my psyche? Um, how are they going to relate, uh, to what's going on in my world? So that one finger salute thing, um, you know, that goes with a lot of our worlds to our bosses, to our, um, exes, to the guy's dog next door. It happens. The news rocks Canada. Everyone is just 
This is Angelo from Haniwa, and you are listening to the Moves. I love sad music. Sad music is one of my favorite things, uh, like The Cure and Dashboard Confessionals and The Smiths and, you know, Depeche Mode. And uh, I could listen to depressing music. That's why I think um, the... Jar of Flies EP by Alice in Chains, one of the greatest things I've ever heard in my life, one of the saddest pieces of music ever. Also, um, Discouraged Ones by Catatonia, another one of the saddest, most depressing pieces of music I've ever heard. Or you ever listen to Cold World? I don't know if a lot of Cold World fans and Killing Grace fans go well together, but um, uh, that had such a dark, gloomy um, tobacco kind of feel to it I, if that makes sense to anybody in the world but me but it had that warm desolate wooden kind of sadness to it and and i like that I, especially uh because they go from one extreme to the next i feel like um <clears throat> these guys could really almost uh, pull off a you know an acoustic sap kind of a deal um excellent Excellent emotion. Emotion is such a good thing. And most of this emotion is just, you know, we're going to, you know, tear your pants off and kick you in the ass. Um, but that was really good. Uh, I love that. Good, you know, uh, air quotes, ballad, you know, kind of a deal, um, which is important because it really broke the trend of the record, um, which is fine. You know, it, it, that's what those kind of songs are for, to kind of take the you know, foot off the gas a little bit and let you breathe. And there was plenty of gas in the tune uh, to keep it uh, still rocking, to keep it still, you know, killing grace. But it had that good, uh, depressive sadness to it. So, um, yeah, man, really good. So that would be another song that I would pick off the record to put on Big Rock Radio. No doubt about it. Okay, this, you know, because I think that uh, a lot of people would relate to it and a lot of people are um, interested in that kind of a deal. So Screaming in Silence is the next song, number 10 on the record. We're doing the whole damn thing track by track. Man, good stuff. Screaming in Silence. You are listening to the Metal Moose.
the latest in high octane metal, Metal Moose. You've been weighed, you've been measured, you've been found wanting, Metal Moose. For the latest in high octane metal, Metal Moose. Visit them on Facebook at Metal Moose Radio for weekly podcasts and more up to date information and events. Metal Up, Metal Moose. Screaming in Silence, my favorite cut on the record. Uh, as soon as I heard the opening uh, riff, I remembered it from the last time I did this. Um, that, to me, is the quintessential um, Killing Grace song. That is, of all of the tunes on this record, if I could pick one song um, to show to a label executive, to show to a good buddy, to play to people at a party or at a bar, that would be it. And that's something that I would feel good about saying, listen to this. This rocks the dust of your Cheeto right here. Um, and that to me, um, so in the grand scheme of things, there are a lot of bands out there who can put out that one rock and kick ass tune. And that is obviously um, one kick ass tune. And you buy the record and there's nine other floppers on there. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking like Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl floppers because those are good floppers. No, I'm talking about flop songs. Um, Killing Grace has done an awesome job of keeping the uh, ass kicking consistent throughout the entire deal. Um, this isn't a Mike Tyson fight. This is just one punch you're out. This has been um, a thorough beating um, a thorough rough ride, you know, you're going to get hung up wet after this one. There's no doubt. Um, so, uh, uh, such a different feel than last time. Cause I, I liked so much what I heard last, but I was so thrown the hell off. And that's why consistency in a record is so important to me. And this is just consistent, it's consistent, um, awesomeness. Like I said, there are things that will change. We'll talk about that at the very end. Um, when I give my full review of the record, uh, but I'm really impressed with it, man. I'm really impressed with it. I, I feel like, um, I feel like this deserves to be out there. Um, touring needs to be out on the road, um, opening up for whoever the hell they can get to open. You know, this is a band that could go, um, open up for Leonard Skinner, you know, and then they could turn around and open up for, you know, any number of, rocking bands out there. So this, uh, this is something that I would feel good enough as a, an agent or a manager to put them on the road, um, learning those chops out there. And then I feel like they could probably run through and, uh, you know, end up going on their own after a few tours, man. So it's good. It's roadworthy. It's murkin as hell. Last cut on the record. Speak with the fist. This is Crown of Thorns by Killing Grace. You're listening to Soundcheck with the Moose.
Crown of Thorns is a good way to end the record. Um, it's got that slow spiral. Um, I'm not a fan. A lot of the of the I even mentioned it earlier. Some of the vocal uh, phrasings and the way he does things is, is not my favorite thing. And that song had a lot of it. Um, but it's a it's a good way to kind of let the dust settle on the record because um, there were 
plenty of boot stomping throughout the record, lots of dust in the air. It's a good rock and roll record. I remember last time I think I gave it a four taco rating, um, which is pretty good. You know, when I, when a fat guy like me gives up four of his tacos, you got to kind of, you know, realize what you're getting there. Um, I would, I would probably give it a four, four or five rating. Um, the flow was much better. Um, this time, last time that was my fault. There are a couple things. I, the guitar tone is not my favorite. I think that there's some, they're really good at filling space, but there's some empty space in there that I think could be played with. Um, I don't know if it's a single, I think it's gotta be a double guitar band. I think that you guys could really work on filling some of, there were some little pieces of dead space the tone is really dry. I mean like barbecue rub dry. Um, I think it could use a little, little wetness, a little bit more moist tone, especially on the leaves. The leaves had a super dry, um, tone to them. Uh, the drumming I thought was um, adequate, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, there's there's a lot to be um, desired there in the drumming category. It's all very solid all the way around. Vocals, instrument, uh, production was okay. Had a real gritty production to it. Um, it's not quite a five because there are things that are different. A lot of the things uh, that are gonna. Uh, prove this record's worth uh, is time. How is this going to sound in 10 years? You know, are you going to put it on and still have that? Um, you know, when you go back and watch shows that you watched when you were younger and you're like, Oh my God, that was awful. You know, it, that's going to be the test of uh, how good this record is. Um, and I think probably so, because I could go back and listen to diver down anytime now. And that record's, you know, 40 years old and it's amazing. Um, this has that, anthem rock that american rock that it that bacon pizza jack daniels beer flavor dripping from it um good stuff man killing grace thanks for giving me the opportunity and i'm sorry i screwed it up the first time um this is badass it's a badass record um just little things like i said and those are 100 percent. i'm sure just me not many people listening to music on the radio are going man i wish that tone had a little bit more wetness in it Nobody even knows what that means, but but me really. So <laughs> you guys get yourself a good product and um, the cover art's good. You know, another thing that's awesome is you guys are just, you're good people. Chad's a good dude. Um, so that helps because if you guys were pricks, I would tell you that your record sucked and I'd have no remorse about it, but it doesn't suck, man. It's good stuff. Thanks so much for listening to Sound Checked with, uh, with me, Moose, Killing Grace. If you'd like your album Sound Checked, get a hold of me. We can do that. Um, cause I love doing this. It's my favorite. I like doing this more than I do the shows. It's a lot of fun. So listen to sound check weekly on iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and so much more until next time Do me a favor and take care. We'll see you. All right, so the music card on the metal moves are served by the authors, their labels are authorized representatives that permitted their material to be used. The metal moves holds no rights to any music played on the show. Go to themetalmoose.com to submit your music to be heard on the show. Metal Moose accepts donations of money, Cheetos, bacon, and naked pictures. Thank you for tuning in and subscribe on iTunes. Rock out when you rack out and consider yourself moosed. <laughs>